Madam, you have only discovered now. You have been minister for seven years, though you are not a trained economist. You are lucky that way. And still, it never occurred to you. Yeah, Madam, no name will be taken. Adani Kishu ko naam nahi hai, title hai. Why are you saying that? She is not a friend economist. What is wrong in saying that? She is wrong on Mohan Singh. She is not even Chidambaram. She is not even Nanantha Nageshwara. But this is a budget which is called AB budget, Andhra Bihar budget. In the budget, they have come from the PMO. Whatever PMO has said, she has no original idea. She has put it in the budget, in the copy and paste type. There is clearly no hope for higher salaries for Anganwadi workers, which have not been revised in 2018. They have no sympathy for the poor Anganwadi worker girls. Shape. This budget will not give relief to the poor in the country. This budget will not spur investment. This budget will not take from the rich and give it to the poor. And this budget will not stop conspicuous consumption by those who indulge in marriage fees. This budget is for poor people to just look and gape at whatever happens in Mumbai. All the stars descending. Manani Sadasya Sri Shogat Raji. Madam, I rise to speak on the budget. Good that the finance minister is here. Yesterday, Obhishek Banerjee from our party has uh, enunciated all the objections we have to the budget, particularly with regard to the dues to West Bengal on the account of NRAG, MGA, NRAGA and Indira Abha Jojana. The government has always been strangely silent on this demands of West Bengal, I again reiterate the same. This, is, this has proved to be the most divisive budget in recent times because a budget is supposed to present the future plans of the government. But this is a budget which is called AB budget, Andhra Bihar budget. They have allotted 59,000 crores to Bihar, 15,000 crores to Andhra Pradesh for a new capital. At least three Congress chief ministers, one Punjab chief minister, Tamil Nadu chief minister, has opposed the budget. And of course, our West Bengal chief minister has called this budget an exercise to save the government. And she also said that the budget was gave zero to West Bengal. Now, madam, I want to say Please, that this budget, this budget, Kerala chief minister has also opposed the budget, right? Madam, the, this budget speech I read it very carefully several times. It's a copy and paste job. They have taken, Congress has already complained that it is taken from their Naya Patra. I have seen that you, you look at 26 education loans. It is the exact program given by West Bengal government for students. Exact. Same 10 lakhs. You are not even original. I do not expect, expect the finance minister to be like Dr. Monmohan Singh. She is not a PhD from Oxford. Not even like Chidambaram, 
who's got a management degree from Harvard. She's from our own JNU. But the problem is that she is bereft. She is bereft of new ideas, which is why this budget is reads very dull. And then you realize that all the notes in the budget, they have come from the PMO. Whatever PMO has said, she has no original idea, she has put it in the budget, in the copy and paste type. Now, this year, the budget, the finance minister vowed to spend 2 lakh crores over five years on five schemes, which are part of what she called the Prime Minister's package, aimed at spurring jobs and imparting skills to 4.1 crore youth. This marked a shift in strategy from the previous government's preferred reliance in letting multiplier and trickle-down effects. Formerly, they said, you give a lot of money, something will trickle down. But now, earlier they did not give any direct handouts to any section of society. The trigger why the budget has changed course is due to the BJP's electoral reverses, where there is a government without a majority. Obishek called it shaky government. I would call it further brittle government, just like a glass. It may break at any time. The FM tried to address the perceived disenchantment among the youth, the salaried class, farmers and small entrepreneurs. One important thing, Madam, you should take note, that just before the election, the revelations came about the donations received for electoral bonds. BJP alone got 50% of all electoral bonds received by all political parties, 50%. Which meant what? This is a government of the moneyed class. As some people say, of the Adanis and Ambanis who contributed to your election, even to your, please don't forget. The Abde, Abde dekha hai. Did you see the revelation? Let him speak. Give it to Sukhdev. Ab jab bolenge tab jawab de denge. Arre Adani ko ek jawab de denge. Aap baithiye, aap baithiye. Bolne dijiye. Naam, Madam, no name will be taken. Adani kisi ko naam nahi hai, title hai. Bol diye. Nee, aap kya bolenge? Khatam kya bolenge? Kya bolenge? Khatam karne dijiye. Kya bolenge? Kya bolenge? Naam baat de diye. Bol diye. But, but in spite of all this, the stock market has reacted badly. It was wobbly because of the capital gains tax. So in spite of all this, the capitalists are not happy. Now, Madam, I will emphasize what the basic problems of the Indian economy are and whether they have been addressed by the finance minister. According to data from Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, unemployment rate rose to an eight-month high of 9.2% in June 2024. The female unemployment rate was higher than the national average of 18.5% in June 2024. Now, we have been doing very poorly in terms of employment generation. You may be knowing, Madam, that there has been job losses in the IT sector. Now, with AI, artificial intelligence coming in, there is fear of further job losses in what was seen as the most profitable part of Indian economy. The second big problem 
in India's economy is rising inflation. The annual consumer inflation rate in India rose to 5.08% in June 2024, well above market expectations. Prices accelerated steeply for food, 9.36%, which is responsible for nearly half of the weight of Indian consumer basket. One company called Cantor, they did a study and they found that 2000, in 2024-25, 34% households reported that they are finding it difficult to manage their expenses, indicating that a third of India is still under severe financial stress. The other problem is, Madam, the shrinking informal sector. This is what has sustained the economy for so long, but informal sector is in grave crisis as NSSO data show. India's 65 million informal or unincorporated sector enterprises employed 110 million workers. They are suffering very badly. What we call MSME, they are suffering. And the other big problem is falling private investment. The finance minister in our presence handed over a tax bonanza to the corporate sector. But private investment has been falling. The government has been hoping that large Indian corporations would step in and ramp up investment. But they introduced production linked incentive schemes for big business. But all these incentives have failed to motivate private investors. They will spend money on their son's marriage, but will not invest in new enterprises. That is the big problem of Indian economy. Lastly, we have a problem of shrinking labor productivity. It shows that labor productivity is contract, contracted in FY23 compared to the preceding year, thus highlighting India's lack of competitiveness in industrial sectors. This is what is called extreme disparity in wealth and income distribution had pushed the economy to a state of gated stagflation. Gated stagflation. That is what the economy is today. The finance minister must resort, please listen to this, must resort to Keynesian prescription of boosting aggregate demand by allocating more government funds for the social sector and targeted welfare programs that, like MGNREGA, increase government spending will boost household consumption, which will stimulate private investment. The finance minister has not gone this route at all. Now let me see, Madam, very important that we study the social sector, how much money the government has doled out to the poor. The allocation for school education has increased only by a nominal 5,000 crores. And for higher education, by only 3,000 crores. In both cases, estimated recoveries are substantially higher compared to previous year, indicating higher fees and self-financing schemes in educational institutions. Allocation for health and family welfare has barely increased by 1,500 crores. So health and education, this as Dr. Amur Toshen is fond of saying, are the foundations of the economy. And there we are not having enough money. There is hardly any increase in food subsidy too. Despite the need for expanding coverage to current population level. The lastly, 
smaller yet critical schemes. Listen to this man. That address vulnerable populations have not got much attention. There is only a slight increase of rupees of two rupees twelve thousand four hundred sixty seven crores for portion scheme. That is school midday meal. That is actually less than the actual expenditure of the scheme. The other thing is that budgetary allocation for Angon Wadis, Madam, you are familiar with all these things. Budgetary allocation for Angon Wadis is only 21,200 crores. And it was only 20,554 crores last year. So it means what? There is clearly no hope for higher salaries for Anganwadi workers, which have not been revised since 2018. They have no sympathy for the poor Anganwadi worker girls. Shame. The, the other thing I want to mention is the budget for national social assistance scheme. Your MP, ma'am, people, old people come to you for widow pension and uh, disabled pension. Look at this. The budget for national social assistance program, which gives social security pension to the elderly single women and disabled, remains unchanged. Not a rupee is added at 9,652 crores, which means this is a reduction in real terms, taking uh, into account inflation. Madam, please consider. Lastly, new package is, they say, Prime Minister's package for employment and skilling. Includes government-sponsored internships, internship formalization of jobs through incentives for EPFO, Employees Provided Fund Organization Enrollment and Skill Development Programs. These schemes do not seem, Madam, may I say, that these schemes do not seem very impressive when one looks at the budgetary allocation. You say that you are taking care of unemployment, but the entire package has an allocation of rupees 2 lakh crore over a period of five years. How much? For two lakh crores in five years, 40,000 crores per year for employment generation. Further, the private sector is required to spend money towards this package from CSR funds. <laughs> private sector used to develop a school, a hospital, this and that. Now, the prime minister is taking in the money. The, uh, from CSR funds by allowing this CSR fund through which companies contribute back to society in some minimal way are now mandated to be used towards subsidizing wages for themselves. How will this economy survive? Rather than discussing dampened demand, stagnant wage, and what can be done to revive employment, the announcement only includes supply side. You are like Milton Friedman. You are indulging in supply side economics. Only includes supply side schemes towards incentivizing the private sector. Private sector, our incentive though, they will create employment. Different versions of this have been tried earlier and have failed. Whether this package will be any different, it remains to be seen. So this, as Madam, I was saying earlier, is a disappointing anti-poor, anti-rich people, anti-poor anti people scheme. So, one, one question is, Madam, you have only discovered now, you have been minister for seven years, though you are not a trained economist, you are lucky that way. And still, 
it never occurred to her. Yeah, yep. She is not a trained economist. What's wrong in saying that? She is no Manmohan Singh. She is not even Chidambara. She is not even Ananta Nageshwar. Ma'am. Why did you not act? Act upon demands made by Bihar, Andhra Pradesh and Odisha earlier? Why are you thinking of them now? Only because of the political compulsions. In your brittle, unstable government, they are the crutches on which you live. And your economy, your budget is going heavier because lopsided because of all these things. India is more unequal now than in the 1920s. It's an unequal society that we have. The, during colonial rule, we are still somewhat more equal than we are today. Madam, Hi. Finance Minister, of course, has not dealt with inflation. Just 10 words on inflation. The most important problem affecting everybody. Ma'am, I will just give one or two figures and then wind up because my friend Shatabdi Rai is due to me and she is naturally feeling disappointed as I go on and on. I will wind up. Madam C, they are saying that 11,11,000 11, crores for infrastructure. Good. They think that that is the be-all panacea for all the ills affecting the ready medicine. Has it been? One infrastructure project, Madam, will take five to ten years to complete. There is an infrastructure project in your area, Damnam Barashad Metro Line. How many years it has taken now? And it is nowhere near completion. Problem of infrastructure is that it is long-term spin-off, no short-term spin-off. This does not appeal. I'll give you a figure. Even railway minister, they say Ashini Bhaisnav is a great railway minister. He has introduced Bande Bharat train. This year, FI24, railways at 5.42 percent of the budget. You know the budget is 48 lakh crores and the revenue is 32 lakh crores. Now railways have gone less 5.42 to 5.3. Aviation, young Ram Naidu was waxing eloquent in the morning but on, ma'am, I'm winding up. Even on aviation, the allocation is 0.05 percent of the budget. And on shipping, the allocation is 0.05 percent. Social sector spending, even on health, it is only 1.85 percent of the budget. Rural development, most important, 5.51 percent of the budget. Higher education, you want to educate the people, privatize education, people will learn on their own, that's what the finance minister's prescription is. Higher education is 0.99% of the budget. School education, it has come down from 1.61 to 1.51% of the budget. Madam, this budget will not give relief to the poor in the country. This budget will not spur investment. This budget will not take from the rich and give it to the poor. And this budget will not stop conspicuous consumption by those who indulge in marriage fees. This budget is for poor people to just look and gape at whatever happens in Mumbai, all the stars descending Abhi in ki Mumbai. Thank With you. that, ma'am, I you. end my submission on the budget. Thank you.